everyone and welcome to our podcast. We are Corporate Conundrums. Uh, we are here to answer any questions you may have to solve business problems, business issues. We'll just introduce ourselves so you have a bit of context and background to our own specialities and then we will look forward to receiving your calls so that we can help you out and give you advice um, from our experience, things that may help you go forward and move and grow in your business. So Wendy, I know you're the UK humanology expert. What on earth is that? Okay, so I've got quite a diverse background, Nicola, right. but I have come to understand that most of the issues I have come across in workplaces is to do with the social dynamics, mm. to do with people and how we interact, how we project, how we impact on each other. And humanology or the humanology business tool that I have developed is based on four quadrants. I look at leadership mm -hmm. and the impact leadership has on culture, which then determines the sort of communication modes within the organization. Right. Um, that will embed either stress or resilience, dependent on the quality of the leadership and the culture and the, 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 the cascading that comes from the leaders into culture communication. Um, and if they are a resilient company, they will have staff that are fit, healthy, happy, motivated, engaged, empowered, all the buzzwords that you hear. Um, unfortunately, in many organizations, I find that one component of the quadrant of issues is disjointed. Right. So leaders have got into a, a, a leadership uh, capacity, but they don't necessarily have the people tools, they've got strategic tools. And if you are a leader, you want people to follow you. So um, that's humanology. I hope that's put some context and helped it you. It does. I can imagine the sphere. I can think of the four quadrants. Yeah. I'm not too sure I know beyond that. And hopefully we can explore a bit more of that uh, on another on on podcast. That'd be good. And Nicola, unlike myself, I'm very UK based. You seem to have travelled around the globe and been to, I don't know how many places in your life. In what context and why were you all over the world and what have you been doing with yourself over the last, I don't know, ever 20 years, 30 years, however long it's been? Oh, Am I aging there? Aging there? <laughs> more than, sorry. <laughs> Just to put it record straight. 20. Um, thank you for that introduction, Wendy. Um, so yes, you're right. Um, I very much started off my career in a couple of a big organisations, Glaxo Welcome, All right. Standard Life, Royal Bank of Scotland. I've worked in Standard Life. Oh, there as you an go. aside, there you not go. at the same well, time as yourself. We'll have to that one later yes. on the coffee. Um, but I very quickly became known as the troubleshooter, the person that could fix the projects ah, that couldn't be fixed by other okay. people. And you just never know quite where you're going to go in your career at the very beginning. Yes. Um, but I, basically, I followed my bosses. So my boss went from Standard Life to the Royal Bank, who then went to Aviva and asked me, and I followed him. Oh, great. Each way. Okay. Because once somebody, you know, you get that rapport yes, with the people yes, angle, yes, yes. it's really worth having that quality of life. So he's a sort of mentor or not not so much? No, just no. happened to be a really, uh, I guess I was lucky to, to work for him yes. and to have somebody that appreciated the skills that I had at the right All time. Right. Okay. Because um, I didn't have any formal project management qualifications or anything right. like that. Right. So I went, decided though to take the leap and rather than be a permanent member of staff, yes. um, around about the age of 24, 25, I decided to set up my own company. That's in line with my age when I set oh, up. Oh, there you go, so, right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I then launched uh, Competitor's Edge and started get, taking on troubled projects. Right. And did one, then the client asked me to take on another one and oh. another one. Often you must I'm have like been the, doing a good job. Well, I'm often like the 10th project manager or the 10th program director. I'm usually the, like the, the last resort, which mm. in itself is obviously very complimentary, but in reality it means that the problems have been piling up. Yes, so you're de an onion. Yes, every time you go in, taking more and more layers off to actually explore what the root cause of the issue is. Exactly. There's just so many things. That, but often it comes down to a really basic thing at the very beginning, right. but we can hopefully look into a bit more of that. But what I found was when I was working uh, for a client in England, they were multinational and said, we've got this big problem in Argentina. Will you go uh, there? OK. And then I went to Argentina. They said, can you go to London? Went to London. Can you go right. to South Africa? I like Argentina better than London myself. Well, it was warm. <laughs> warm. Uh, the sunshine always Bit does. of dancing. Energy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and really the countries then it just became the norm where you become associated with the person because it's very much a people thing when yes. you go into these projects often yes. you're talking 300 people directly within the program yes but also all these stakeholders around the rest of the company 
So being able to get through the cultural issues when you're working in different countries um, and the remote working. And of course, a lot of my clients have got big offshore teams. Well, I think that's why we came together. Exactly. Because we, we realised that with Nicola's strength in project management and my strength in the, the attitude, behaviour, people side, uh, dovetailing the two together would offer you guys a service um, that we feel would be most beneficial because we're bringing our strengths to together to give something which is very holistic and hopefully we can answer a multitude of different questions that that you can you can phone in or write in uh, write into us and we've got callers today that um, you'll hear from quite a diverse range we don't know what we're going to come across but it could be anything and uh, we look forward to anybody else that has any issues giving us a call or writing in with their problems to corporate conundrums so that we can really point you in the direction. So I think we've got our first caller. Hello, Frank. It's Nicola and Wendy from Corporate Conundrums. How can we help you today? Yeah, hi there. Uh, I was recommended by a colleague to, um, or you were recommended to give you a call. I've got a query. Um, I'll give you a bit of background first. My background, fuel sales energy. Uh, we advise businesses on how to uh, get the best out of their energy use. Okay. Um, and then hope to sell them the services. Uh, so that's the background. Uh, a wide range of businesses from small to medium and a couple of large ones. Um, but my question is, how do I encourage my colleagues uh, that are doing very, very well to share best practice and strategies uh, and give an idea of best niches to maybe target uh, with those colleagues on the team that are not doing quite so well? Is that a straightforward question? It is, it is. Thank you for calling, Frank. That's, a, that's quite a, a big but important question because I don't think that's unique to yourself, especially in field sales. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to kick this one off, Nicola? Well, I always feel that whenever it comes to um, helping somebody else, there has to be an element of uh, trust and buy-in. And when, you, when a new member coming into a sales team, particularly a field sales team like you're describing there, and I think you... Yeah. Um, would this be in Scotland where people are quite far spread out? Is this right? Yes, it is. It's across the whole of Scotland. Right. And so it's, it's often in those scenarios that people feel they ought to be spending all their time on the road selling. Um, and then team meetings and things are done remotely and, and phoning in. Yes. Um, and you know, it's very difficult to build up that trust, particularly with new people. And invariably, the new people are the lower performers because they don't have the same level of contact. Yeah. And, and I don't think they feel part of an organisation. Mm. They're isolated in the they are an entity almost like being self-employed within an organization. It's effectively, sorry to interrupt, it's effectively like being self-employed. Right. You maybe don't meet, you maybe meet up with colleagues once a month. Right. Uh, but the rest of the time you, you work, you're based from home, or obviously traveling, yeah. and you travel around designated areas. So the, the, I think there's the problem. Um, not having a, a rapport or a friendship or a relationship with those that you're working with it doesn't engender uh, a feeling of trust and a feeling of want to connect and share ideas i think nicola you mentioned the the buddy process well, that i just, liked well i was just thinking that there's um particularly in a lot of the big management consultancy firms they've got whenever you get a new member of staff they're immediately buddied up with two people within the organization yeah one at the very top if at all possible not necessarily the top two or three people but the very top and also somebody else embedded in another department and yes. those people their job is one to befriend the person but two to get them around the organization and to introduce them to other people but it's really just it starts networking you immediately into that organization yes. Yes. and i can I, that for me would work quite well in a sales team because when you start you, you know, you get your, your bag, you're out on the road, mm -hmm. but you're then on your own again. Yeah. But immediately, if Frank was my buddy, if you were my buddy, then I've now got two people that I talk to every day and ideally meet up with as much as possible. Maybe even that shadowing concept. But yeah. it's not really about the shadowing and it's not really about that initial learning you get. It's about becoming an important person in those people's lives. Yes, and, and then you have the, the will, the want, and the desire to actually chat about how, how work's been, more in a, a, a non-professional way than a professional way almost, so that the, the sharing of information is, is organic. It just happens through a, a friendship call. And I do think this idea of um, being on the road sales, although the organization may just be bean counting with regard to the income they're getting, the, the key component of sustainability and keeping people enjoying their work 
is that feeling of they're part of something and they're not just isolated and just there to earn money. For me, work's not just about, you know, financial retribution, retribution, remuneration even, uh, financial <laughs> remuneration. It's very much about being part of something and an organization and building a relationship with, um, with that organization and those that work within it. I can imagine uh -huh. if, if I was the, the, the high flying salesperson, I'll enjoy the fact that I achieve my targets more perhaps than somebody else. And yeah. so the idea of voluntarily giving my um, inside information to my, what may be colleagues, but I might also see as my competitors Indeed. in some way, could be quite a threatening environment to be in. Yeah. And I found that that also happens in, in other organizations that don't have the real sales targets. And so much of that is about having shared goals and shared payment and bonus structure. So there's yes. an element of individual achievement there, but you still get your recognition for being the high performer yourself. Yes but that you also can achieve additional remuneration if your whole team at least achieves a certain level of de minimis. Yes, indeed. Uh, and indeed. therefore it is mm -hmm. trying to give something, because if I'm a salesperson, mm -hmm. I'm driven by making money and proving that I'm good at something, or perhaps it's I like being on the road. You know, people have all their different things. Yeah. But commission yeah. is a key part of, of You selling. know, I absolutely agree with that. But I, 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 alongside that is I love this buddy system mm -hmm. because I just think it engenders a feeling of being part of something and there's much more likelihood of sharing ideas um, I don't know if that's something that you um, currently do in any way Frank no they don't uh, really do that what um, what we're trying to do is on a daily conference call is to say look you know come on share the best practices we all get good months periodically but it's really to try and get the consistently good performers who are maybe having success in a particular niche, for example. Yeah. So it might be the licensed trade, it might be the retail trade, to say, look, you know, you've got your designated area, so it's not as though somebody's going to step into your area and take your business. Um, but why not share that? But th there's a great reluctance to share that. There's no great incentive. Um, and maybe uh, because we're all individually targeted, yeah. you know, we all have individual he, he targets. Yeah, yeah, rather than th there's a kind of lack of, um, not cohesion, but there's a lack of teamwork. Well, that aspect It's very Nicholas, much a team of 10 individuals. And that aspect that Nicholas just mentioned about perhaps looking at a commission structure that is based on not only individual achievement, but based on uh, the, the team achievement might um, address some of what you've just said. Um, I think I think the the idea of developing a team and something that just occurred to me as you were talking, Frank, is um, having a information written down. You know, I succeeded doing X, Y, and Z. Uh, the principles of of behind that or how it, how I achieved it was X, Y, and Z. Maybe having a crib sheet that once a month is shared amongst the the team and people can say, oh yeah, that's an idea or a thought I haven't had previously. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll put this this forward to um, to the management um, because I've tried individually to encourage them yeah. to to encourage the managers to encourage the um, the high performers and, and there are some that are just regularly high performers so that they maybe they work harder maybe they take knockbacks because sales obviously you're going to encounter the lots of no's before you get the yeses yeah. um, so maybe some people are better at dealing with those than others um, but it'd be good to kind of qualify that rather than even on the sales meetings we get together and it's purely, oh, st it's almost a name and shame. Yes, oh, wow, yes. here's a stat. Stevie's done fantastic. Pat on the back, Stevie, round of applause. Uh, oh, John, you need to improve what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah so, no. I, which doesn't do much good. It's demotivating. Absolutely. Well, it Absolutely. sounds like if you've got a few things there to to take forward, Frank, and we really look forward yes. to hearing how you get on, and, and perhaps you might even share some of that learning in, in a future podcast. That would be great. No, I'd be happy to do that. I really appreciate you. That's some good ideas. Yeah, I'll forward those on. And uh, I've got another uh, colleague who's in a different industry, he's in the letting agency business. Um, and I know he's got a couple of queries, so it's okay with you. I'll maybe pass your details on. That would be great. That would be great. Many thanks, Frank, and uh, thank you for calling Corporate Conundrums. Bye for now. My pleasure. Bye -bye. Thanks bye -bye. very much. Bye. bye bye. Bye. You know, I was thinking, Wendy, this is um, similar in sports. Yeah. Because if you're looking at um, athletics and somebody is able to run the one minute mile, but then because they're able to run it, then people start running it in 59 seconds. Yes. And then they 
and yeah. part of that is because those people that were able to do it become the trainers yeah, yeah sometimes yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. more like a generational thing so once those people start competing they then are more willing to pass on their knowledge yes, uh, yes but yes. of course in sales we're really needing that knowledge right now we can't be waiting until everybody's retired before they <laughs> give over yeah. their no that wouldn't work no <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i would agree with that but it, it, it i think of this aspect of befriending and the buddy system and making people feeling part of a team even though they are effectively competing against each other although frank mentioned that they they were they were in specific demographics so mm -hmm. there there isn't actually actual competition because they have their area uh, specific to themselves um, so there, there isn't a real reason not to share the information. It's maybe an ego thing. And that old ego thing can get in the way of, of, of a lot of um, situations in, in work. But um, the, the idea of buddy mm -hmm. friendship, um, you know, yeah. becoming part of an entity and thinking of the organization growing, not just your commission, but growing and being part of that organic growth. And you care because the buddy becomes somebody you care about. Yeah. And you actually want to look that you've done a good enough job by getting your buddy to that same yeah, yeah, position. Yeah. And that the commission structure that you mentioned yeah. encourages it. So although it's not, um, it's not just let's be best friends, um, it's if, if we are all part of a, a growing organization, yes, we get a commission, but there's also um, remuneration for in, engendering that feeling of uh, team building um, and development and passing the ideas back and forth and possibly even having some crib sheet that is delivered once mm. a month on on how or why they think sales were made it was it just the fact that they put time and energy in it or did they have a specific mm. technique what was the secret, yeah. was the secret? Mm. did they have a technique in how they were actually managing the sales process and was it was it a regular technique they were using that um, they find works mm. so hello iona yeah you're hello. talking to wendy and nicola from C corporate conundrums what conundrum hello. can we help you with well, thank you. So I've been a professional visual artist for 14 years now, and I've also taught and run a series of creative painting workshops for the past six years with various organizations and individuals. So what I want to know is how do I win government contracts to deliver my workshops to the wider public and help enable greater mental health and well-being throughout Scotland? Oh, that's a great question. Mm. Big question, but a great question, Iona. Thank you. Um, I would say, first and foremost, you need to really have a, a good definitive product. What about adding? What have you got, Nicola, to add to that? Well, I'm thinking that with, with these big government organisations, they really need a really clear statement of intent. They mm -hmm. need to understand what it is that you're looking to offer and why it's something they want to buy in. But I wonder, Wendy, if we need to drill into really is it how would a government organisation actually interact directly with an organisation like yeah. Iona's? Perhaps that might be a, yeah, no, a challenge. Iona, something you might consider rather than perhaps going direct to an organisation or direct to a government is looking to organisations which already exist mm -hmm. and yeah. that provide mental health training. Um, mm -hmm. I've come across a number of those organisations, so you would effectively be an associate or they would subcontract to you yeah. to deliver the training um, there's a company, EHM Training. They uh, are a, specific, a company that deliver specific mental health training. Um, their, their tag is Empowering Healthy Minds, uh, based in Falkirk. Um, so organisations like that, and I would suggest there's quite a few uh, Scotland-wide uh, that you could approach um, as long as you've defined your product um, yes. and perhaps designed your website. But mm -hmm. to find that, uh, go to them and see whether or not they might be interested in how you would affect um, the dynamic of healthy minds, um, health and well-being, and um, the, all the other mm -hmm. aspects that you mentioned. I think that's a, a point of call for taking forward, and then they would be the ones that would approach um, bigger, larger organisations such, like, such as the government. Because yes. Wendy, you've worked previously with government organisations, but also with these uh, third party training events. Yeah. And I would imagine that they require real evidence into what it is that they're taking on board. Yeah, de definitely. Going back, you said you had already delivered these training sessions, Iona. I would yes. suggest using references, testimonials, having people that will validate how it has affected them and their health and well being would be yeah. a very strong um, solution to 
government entities and to those that are working within the public sector. So um, you definitely need the evidence side and the testimonial side. Um, from my from my experience and looking at yes. where I've worked, that's something they'll always look to to get. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That's really useful. Um, um, Iona, I was just thinking that you sound like you really are the person with the passion and the drive behind this, mm -hmm. and it's the person in many ways that people want to be on the course with because you're bringing yes. those skills. And so perhaps this uh, option of having a, a really a framework that other companies are providing that you're then getting on with the bit that you do best. But I would also think that within the testimonial end, because you've done some really good work within schools you've mentioned, it's finding yeah. a champion within the public sector. I think mm -hmm. when you're trying to sell into government yes, uh, organizations, definitely. having that champion, the person that creates the demand, getting through all the procurement headaches yeah. is a challenge mm -hmm. in itself. But if you've got that person that has the real demand, that'll get you through. And I think if you then are now going to go through these third party organizations, you're able to go to them saying, listen, I just don't really want to get involved in the paperwork side. Absolutely. But what I do have is a demand. It really helps bring them on board. So have a look at the people that you've engaged with and see if perhaps one of those people might be a really good champion for you. That's yep. great. Some good ideas already. Mm -hmm. So we hope that um, we've managed to point you in the direct, direct, right direction with your conundrum, Iona. And we wish you all the best. <laughs> Thank and you so we'll much. say goodbye for now. Thank you. That was really valuable. Thanks. Thanks for calling. Bye. 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 That was really interesting. It was interesting. I think the whole area of mental health is such a growth area. Um, I know from my experience, you know, working in humanology, um, one of the key aspects nowadays is the focus on resilience mm. and stress management. And having a different perspective or doing something that's different to the norm of stress management training I think sounds really exciting. I well, wasn't there some recent um, investment made, I think over the last few years, it's become more, more talked about, it's okay to have a mental health issue now. Yes. Perhaps not everybody experiences that, but there's a momentum there. Yeah. I think, I think this, the, the, well, we could, we could go on forever discussing <laughs> mental health and stress at work. Um, my belief is nowadays it's more relevant than ever before because of technology. And there is definitely more um, funding, both privately and mm -hmm. uh, publicly, for mental health, um, I would rather use the term mental fitness. We all have mental health, but mental fitness um, in today's workplace because we're now 24 seven culture. It just never stops. Um, downtime is, you know, non-existent because of all the gadgets that we are, um, I say exposed to, and some people say invited to use. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking also this, the challenge of being an individual person, a sole trader or a limited company that there's maybe one or two employees with such a great service that Iona has there to yeah, offer. Yeah. To take that into this, what might seem like a huge mire of government bureaucracy, yeah. it's very difficult to say, hey, I'm worth investing in. Absolutely. That's why going to uh, organisations that are existing, mm. such as mental health um, training companies, uh, within the public sector as well, they'll have specific mm. bodies that already, you know, do mental health training. Mm. So very much, I think, being a sole trader, it's difficult to um, bite into that huge, big corporate world, public or private. Uh, and the idea of uh, attaching to somebody that's already through the red tape, mm. very beneficial, but a huge growth area. And I think Iona will have an exciting future. I think we've actually got our next caller coming in. I think we've got Lena. Oh, Lena, are you there? Morning. Um, I just have a question. Um, I run two online marketing companies, and my business is based to help people with their hair and skin. All right. And my question to you is, um, how can I grow a team in my businesses so I can spread the love of natural products? Interesting. That sounds uh, like quite a fascinating area to be in, Lena. Um, I'll kick off, shall I, Nicole? I would say with anything like network marketing, um, the basis behind selling it is the person mm -hmm. and, and the enthusiasm and the energy and the belief they have both in themselves and in the product, because that's really what you're selling to other people to get them to buy into the excitement and the, um, the product. So from the, the first kick, I would say how you connect with people, the enthusiasm in your voice, the, the passion you have about the product and the end results, obviously, 
which might take you more into to meeting them or seeing them um, and developing that aspect. You, what, what well, I was wondering, Lena, is this something that you do remotely or is it something that you actually go out and meet people? How does the mechanism work for your business? Both. <laughs> um, I do, obviously, I do online posts um, daily and I obviously see lots of people daily. So I just talk about my business and people can see the results of obviously both of my businesses, what's happened to me. Um, so it, it's more like um, self referral, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Have you got a, a sort of before and after type thing, Lena, with regard to how the product has benefited you? Yes, I've done that as well. That's online. And is that visual or is it um, yeah. it's visual? And so um, when you meet people in person, are you have you got something in the way of um, visual to, to show them when you're when you're talking about the product? Product? They can see a picture of me before I started using it and a picture of me now. And obviously they can see me so they can see what's actually happened. Great, great. Well, I, I think the meeting in person is absolutely key because um, going in and people seeing what what the advantages of using the product are um on a one-to-one -one basis is much more powerful because without without actually speaking to people face to face they'll never receive or get that passion um from from what you're talking about um the the people that you're that you're contacting would be um self-employed or sole trading or um not necessarily in a full-time other job as well because otherwise they just wouldn't have the time energy and focus to be able to to buy into the aspect of what you're talking about and the the unique product that you have to to sell i would suggest i wonder wendy that when we start off of course we're often just like that one person yes. we've got this great idea yes and um, clearly in lena's case she's used her product she knows that they really work she's able to demonstrate that they really work yep and sometimes going out to that mass market it can be very difficult mm -hmm. um, and I in my experience sometimes getting one or two other champions yes because yes. when I say oh you must look at the product that I've used yeah. it's not the same message as when I say you must look at the product look at what's happened in Wendy's case look at what's happened in Sarah's case to be able to refer somebody who speaks on your behalf yes has indeed. a much greater power, power. than yeah. you speaking yourself and so I when I was looking at my time management in this particular area perhaps 10 or 20 percent at least should be focused on trying to get one or two really good champions um, to spread the word on your behalf and yes. it also creates that dynamic when you're in those online forums because it's quite easy to get buried isn't it nowadays definitely mm -hmm. uh, there's there's the the home home office stroke working from home market is extensive and i think it's quite important for you to be highlighted as one of the the best within that environment. Um, and we could go into more detail about the specifics and the mechanics behind how that would manifest into actual uh, financial gain for the individuals. But at the moment, I would say the, the key for me, as I started by saying, Lena, is you being um, enthusiastic, passionate, selling that or delivering that to your um, key sponsors, your key, what you were just mentioning, Nicola, your key um, champions. Um, and they then effectively are your testimonials and your references. So you're not, you're not selling yourself as much. You're selling, people are selling you and that's much more powerful. I don't know if that's something you've contemplated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously I've got quite a lot of people that do use the product anyway. And they've given me their before and after photos. So I try and share that out on my Facebook or my Instagram so people can see other results apart from me. Yes, yes. So um, assuming that that is happening, Lena, is there a, a gentle growth to, to where you are now with regard to your team or has it stopped dead? It, it, I mean, I've grown. Um, with the hair business but not as in the people haven't actually joined the company they're using the products but okay. they're not actually joining the company to do exactly what i do yes Does that make sense? so mm -hmm. yes indeed so it's sort of two different points of sale by the sound of it so yeah. you're, you're, you're effectively selling the products on to individuals who who will pay you for for that but and um, you also have the ability to to build a team to, to sell the products and, and that's what you what you're looking to develop. 
for me it yeah. very much is what we've just said it's it's about it's about you it's about you your delivery your enthusiasm your passion and and how and how that comes across to others if others see the radiance happiness passion and enthusiasm you've got they are likely to buy into that space i wonder if there's um we talked about these jelly groups oh yeah, yeah we were yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. jelly groups last week and i'm just wondering if um there's other people out there who are in a similar position to yourself lena who um are really open to finding an opportunity um but sometimes mm -hmm. what they feel is they're um Isolated. Or lone, isolated, isolated yes exactly isolated um and being able to be out in the community with with one or two people to where they want to hang out i think yeah. sometimes um having my own business it's very hard you think gosh that seems like such a big thing about to take on this new challenge yeah. but actually when they um, have that support from somebody like yourself then they think well, actually it's not quite so scary i wonder if there's something about helping yeah. people make that next step of instead of just being a customer but actually, how do I make that next step without it being too scary? Yes, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, Lena, what's the name of the business? Yeah, the first one is Milljard uh, Organics. Okay. So that's a skincare. Yep. And the hair is Monet. Okay, so Neil's Yard Organics obviously is a very well uh, known, pro um, manu respected, yeah. respected manufacturer. Um, and uh, not so, not, I, I don't know the other one, Monet, but. Why don't you have a think about, do you know the concept of a jelly? No. <laughs> okay, so um, it's basically um, finding a workspace. Uh, it could be a hotel, it could be anywhere where you you get the space free and uh -huh. um, they you buy teas and coffees there. But you would have a, a, a Neil's Yard or a Money um, uh, morning uh, where you invite people into the workspace and you just have a wee chat and you have a, a, a collaborative discussion about the benefits and about both aspects of how the product benefits you, but also um, becoming part of the team, how you can generate income from that for those that are perhaps looking for a secondary income. So you, you get a space, you in, send out invites, you invite people into the, the workspace, you work in a sort of collaborative way, cross fertilize cross fertilizing the ideas but um you would be the the facilitator if you like um talking about the product and passing on that enthusiasm and bringing in some some of your team if you've got um other members in your team to to do the same and sort of spread it on a face to face way by bringing it like a networking group but specific for that area that you're in you know i was just thinking okay. there um lena that there's a particular group. Part of the challenge, of course, is our immediate network aren't necessarily entrepreneurial type people. Yes. And but within the world of um, face and care and mm -hmm. looking after yourself are, of course, people who are entrepreneurs. So yeah. you have a lot of um, massage therapy, physiotherapy and mm -hmm. um, sports people so where they already run their own business. And to be able to represent your work. Um, would be something that would be quite natural because they already do that yes. already. Yes. And they already have a customer mm -hmm. base. So they also then can immediately see, I don't have to go and find new people. I'm now going to make more money out of my immediate customer base I already have. Yeah. I wonder if they might be a more um, receptive frame of yeah. mind at this yeah, stage. Yeah. Um, and so perhaps see, seeing how we could get some of them involved in the, in the jelly or yeah. similar. Yeah, so targeting it, that's a great idea. Targeting it to people who already use such as Neil's Yard's oils, massage oils, um, targeting it to them, inviting them to a jelly and saying, um you know this might be something you want to consider maybe not just purchasing but adding an additional um, income stream to what you're doing by becoming a team member and not only using the products but um selling them or um suggesting to your clients um and bringing it into that space that jelly space uh, might be might be a, a more direct way of um doing that lena okay yeah yeah well, okay. i'll give it a go okay <laughs> Well, it's been great. Thank you so much for calling Corporate Conundrums. We hope that that has been um, at least given you a point of direction to, to go forward with, Lena. Um, we wish you all the best. And if in the future we can, we can help out with anything additional or you give us feedback as to you know, how, how that has worked and if you've started a jelly, we'd love to hear about it. Great. Thank no you problem. for your call. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 So, what an interesting challenge. Yes, yeah.
in so many different things you could do to tackle that but yeah. then which one do you focus on first yeah 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 it, it, it there's an awful lot of um people mm. now in the market looking at um second sources of income and it can be quite a difficult space to make your your area be highlighted mm. to make it be the the one that people hang their hang their coat on um but I think the idea of that uh, being targeting specifically in a in one of those jelly groups um, is a is a, a great point of point of action. I, I would I would say that might um, generate uh, potential team members in a more uh, yeah specific or defined way. So, so some of these um, multi level marketing companies have really dominated in recent yes, years haven't yes. they or oh, her herbal life herbal life oh my goodness yes. in some parts of the country you meet five or six agents in yeah. your local area yeah. Yeah. and it's a real it's like a part of a body a community to yes. be part of yeah. that you're just desperate to be do yeah, more yeah. and, and it, to learn more it's because of the people mm. it's because they're so enthusiastic and passionate about whatever the product mm. uh, um, i confess when i was young uh, or younger, I was part of a multi-level marketing organisation, not to do with anything related to the body. Um, and the thing that I bought into was the, the power of, of the people and the enthusiasm that everybody had about the product. Ironically, it is no longer. This technology has taken over where this was. But they ran events and they ran sales events and communication. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. it was just... It was enthusiastic. It was a it was an energy and a buzz, mm -hmm. and I certainly bought into to that rather than the specifics of the product. And that's what I was saying to Lena. I think it's very much about how she positions herself, um, in that space. Perhaps as we come into the summer, um, the British <laughs> environment and weather might be more positive. I think sometimes getting out and about in these things yeah. can help. And when we yeah. have our winter and people tend to go home, it's yeah. a less energetic. A yeah. of the places yeah. I've seen these. Uh, multi-level marketing firms work is when they're out and about in very sunny climes yes that's true people that's spend true. more time outdoors therefore they're more likely to be meeting other people yeah. um, and i know it's like something close to our hearts isn't yeah. it getting people out of the office getting absolutely. out there embracing the world absolutely no i um i would entirely agree with that in fact talking of that multi-level company i was involved with they held their conferences out in spain in the ah. winter time <laughs> So, uh, and it was for that very reason, it, it sort of engenders energy. Uh, it's hard when it's raining and dull outside to, to always keep a positive, happy, smiling face. Uh, but it's important. Positivity in everything you do is the thing that's going to um, not only make you feel great, but make those that you're speaking and communicating with great. That's great. I'm a great believer in perception is projection. If you're positive, you radiate that to everybody else out there and uh, from my belief I think that uh, helps everybody go forward in whatever walk of life they're involved in. Well let's see if our next caller is radiating and if not let's see if we can help them. Hello Emma it's Nicola and Wendy here from Corporate Conundrums how can we help you today? Hi uh, how are you today? Very well, good thank, thank you. you thanks Emma <laughs> nice to speak That's to you. Good. Thanks for having me. Um, oh look I am in the very messy beginning stages of setting up a, a social venture and mm -hmm. of course to do that I need money I need capital so I just wondered if you had any sort of any tips or ways to access um, funding obviously in the long term we want to make our own money and support ourselves but yeah. in the short term to set up we need we need some money so yeah can you give us a bit of context gems. context of, around the, the social enterprise Emma yeah okay so it's um, it is to be a, a social space for young people to find connection, to have opportunities to learn and grow, um, right. to find mental health support. So it is really about mental health um, and early intervention. So a lot of kids have a really long wait for help and I'd like to cut yes. that out and find yes. a way to signpost families to, to help quicker, I guess. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that, yeah, that, that's that, that is so so badly needed um certainly the health service has uh, extended you know with all resources and i believe that uh, young people accessing mental health um mental health support is is really tricky so congratulations to you for going down that that route um thank you well there's 
when it comes to funding, I mean, there's so many yeah. paths, isn't there? Um, you can be very busy filling out application forms. Um, the kind of the basic ones for me is there's immediate access to certain business startup or organization startup mm -hmm. funding. So registering yeah. with your local business gateway is definitely mm -hmm. worthwhile. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And not only can they provide direct funding, but they can also provide access to certain services that you might require, perhaps um, human resources advice, uh, legal advice, um, but also um, maybe IT, perhaps you're needing some help with a basic landing page for your website. Yeah. Then of yeah. course there's the, the real grant uh, applications, which yes. I think, um, Wendy, you're involved in an organization uh, that's doing a similar kind of trying to source funding. And I think the list I've seen is a huge it's number extensive. of places. Yes, mm. uh, there's, um, uh, um, Nicholas sort of possibly coming on board as mm. well, but yeah. um, ironically, Emma, I'm involved with a, a social enterprise hub as well called For the Common Good. And oh, um, it's not focusing on, on young people, although there will be a component of that. So perhaps at another stage, it's worth a further conversation along the lines of synergy there. However, with regard to the funding applications, um, there are numerous, dependent on where you are, there are numerous uh, council um, applications uh, and associations that you can apply for funding, uh, such as the, I've, I've got a list, but I haven't got it with me, Landfill, Landfill Trust, um, First Port, um, I can actually identify a few more um, after we, we speak and perhaps send them over to you. But there are a numerous um, number of bodies that you can apply. Um, it's quite a laborious process, but um, long term, it's obviously going to be worthwhile um, to see if you can get the, the funding. So I, I think the best plan of action, rather than me listing them all at the moment, is perhaps to take your contact details and to keep in touch. And after the, the show, we will um, send them over to you. I wonder, Fabulous. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So we've covered, obviously, there's the, the business gateway plan. There's Scottish the, Enterprise, which is business yes. gateway. Absolutely. We, if you can we actually, but you can actually go direct to Scottish Enterprise over and above business gateway. Oh. So business gateway has the, because each business gateway is dependent on which one you're in, but is funded differently. Some of them are directly funded via the council. And some of them are directly funded via the Scottish government. But Scottish Enterprise have their own funds specifically for um, different areas within the, the uh, charity charity sector. So I, I don't know if you've gone down that avenue, Emma, but I would definitely look at Scottish Enterprise as well. OK, I will. I haven't yet. So that's great. Thank yeah. you. And they may be. A, a, and if you if they don't directly help, they may be able to point you in a direction um, mm -hmm. that would be uh, advantageous to you. The other angles I was thinking of is um, corporate sponsorship. Mm -hmm. um, Price funding or? Well, yes, of course, but corporate sponsorship where you actually, I mean, the, right. many companies nowadays are starting to really embrace corporate social responsibility. Yes, indeed. And whilst there's the traditional things of maybe every member of staff can go out and help clear litter off the streets or help their local community with some project, um, they're actually embracing it even more now. Yeah, and social saying, conscious. How can, yeah, yes, yeah, how yeah, can indeed. we really add value to our local community? And I wonder if perhaps there might be a number of uh, organizations not necessarily having to be the big international names that we know of because yeah. there's lots of other organizations that would like to tap into supporting their local community something to consider and then the, the last one is crowdfunding campaign have, have you looked into doing any kind of online crowdfunding at all i have i've actually started a crowdfunding with gofundme okay um, and that that's quite good in terms of it you don't have to put an end date on it and you don't have to raise all the money in order to get the money. So that Great. is a good thing about Great. it. But I think not having an end date takes away any urgency. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I might put it in an end date anyway to try yes. and build a bit of momentum and um, urgency behind it. Because at the moment, it's just, it, it's just kind of there and it, it raised a little bit at the beginning um, but then it, I think it's a natural cause of events is that it gets a bit of attention and then it peters out for a yeah. while. So, yeah, um, maybe knowing maybe, how to get that out there a bit more. Have you, are you sure, doing a, yeah. a blog, um, Emma, um, sort of a diary, of, you know, how things are going and blogging and, and, and linking in your GoFundMe campaign into the blog? No, I haven't done that. That's a great idea, actually, because yeah. I do have a, I do have a blog. Yep. Um, so yes, I, I need to 
probably tell the story a bit more. I think people and, buy into yeah. stories. You know, I think that's a, yeah. that's a, a, a that'll make a difference for people wanting to to contribute. Can I ask Emma, is the um, the enterprise, the, the young people's enterprise, what was the name of it, sorry? It's called Happiness Now. All right, is Happiness Now going to be within a, a located area? So are you going to have premises, etc.? The plan is to have a premises initially. I'm in Edinburgh, so it'll be somewhere in Edinburgh. Right. To have a premises, but the services, I'd like to start the services Street away. before we yeah. actually have a premises. Right. So, yeah, I think we don't need to have a premises to, to do some of the things, um, youth activities and signposting. Right. We do. I, I already do a support group for parents that have anxious children Great. once a week. We just meet up and, and chat, really. But it's something, you know, it's a place to, to share yeah. advice and stories and yeah. stuff like that. So... Well, I commend yeah. you. I've got I've got three teenage boys, Emma. So I commend <laughs> you in what you're doing because it can be um, a very uh, difficult time and seems to be ever increasingly difficult. Maybe because there's so much more on in their lives. Maybe because of technology and social media. But certainly, I commend you in what you're doing because uh, it's so needed. So needed. Um, Thank so you so much. I hope that we've pointed you in the direction and given you some help and food for thought. And definitely, you definitely have. There's some new sort of ideas there that I will follow up and I think will definitely help. So thank you. Great. And, I, and we'll come back to you. Um, I'll email you a list of other organisations from the point perspective of funding and we'll put our heads together and come back to you with anything that we find and um, that we think will be useful. And uh, we would love to keep keep in touch and just see how the progress goes, um, because very much behind your whole idea and the thoughts of what you're what you're doing, I think it's fantastic. Many congratulations and thank you very much for calling corporate conundrums. And um, if you have any issues in the future, feel free to give us another call, Emma. Great, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. Okay, Good luck with you the podcast. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Emma. Bye. What a great. A great, um, great initiative. Um, you know, past experience has told me that uh, getting medical help or intervention for teenagers is so difficult. I mean, there are online um, places like Signpost, mm. which um, you can go online to get some direction and help. But uh, with the immediacy of, of um, worry that a parent has if one of their children is going through any mental health issues, um, the more of the the more organisations mm. there are to embrace and give help to teenagers that are struggling is, in my opinion, so valuable, so important. It feels like really when we can bring communities together. Yes, we look yes. after each other. There's more direct access. Yeah. People share knowledge because sometimes these services are available but nobody knows about them. Indeed. Um, Indeed, and so actually through the activity of raising funds, that's actually spreading the word. Absolutely, um, which Absolutely. then means it access it makes it much more accessible to, to yeah. many. You know, I actually ran a crowdfunding campaign last right. year, and I've learned a lot. And I think I'd, if I run another one in the future, I'll definitely be doing a few things differently. Yes, but what I found was it was that mechanism for paying money that suddenly a crowdfunding campaign gives you because you've now got a place where somebody can give money to an entity so they give it into did you say it was GoFundMe? GoFundMe. Um, so happiness you, now just to yes to you with an PR, <laughs> happiness now GoFundMe I would get behind that guys because it's a very worthwhile cause and I'm sure most of you that are listening will agree with that um, and but often it's hard to go up to somebody and say could you give us 50 pounds yes, could you give us yes. 10 pounds what how could you help us but when there's a mechanism that's more Formal now yes the people can go they can read about you they're not just buying into a, a bucket they're actually yeah. buying into the person behind it yes. the ethos behind it people become a, become a bit of a, an advocate in fact and many similar to what we talked about um, with one of our earlier callers but having other people that sell your message indeed because as one indeed. person Emma can only reach a certain number of people but if you get a number of people with the momentum you can then reach thousands yeah it's like a spider's web mm. Um, and lots of different networks spreading the use to the next network etc yeah. etc et so yeah um, I actually so was... had, spoke last year with one of the Scotland's kind of top crowdfunding experts yes. for some advice um, and what he said was really you have to run the numbers so if you mm. want to raise a thousand pounds and you imagine that that's going to be ten pounds a 
person so you need 100 people to donate yeah. to you yeah then how many people do you need to have accessed to get to your 100 people right and in his experience it was around about a three percent response it's, rate mm. so if you need 100 people then you start thinking gosh i need thousands of people that i'm in contact with and not that many of us have got that immediate net access no, to thousands but agree. i might have access to 100 and those people will have access to 100 and so therefore it's critical to get that yes, momentum yes, 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 to yes. other people absolutely yeah. absolutely well we'll have uh, to check in with her yeah, and see yeah, how yeah. she's getting on and keep keep on keep a uh, lookout for um happiness now yes um no that was a an interesting call um so we've had a busy morning so far um wow, enjoy really good calls yeah quite a mixture a variety of different questions which has been great hopefully we've um pointed people in a good direction um, we have got a written question here, oh. uh, which I think is worth looking at. And I think it's quite specific for you, Nicola. Right, okay. Um, it's from a, a chap called David. Uh, he's a project manager and mm -hmm. has been running a waterfall uh, for the last 20 years or so. And six months ago, he was told that they were now going to be agile. Uh, he's got chaos ensued <laughs> help how do we fix it so over to you i think this is very much in your ball ball court thank you very much well thank you david for that huge question <laughs> um but I, I start off by saying you're not alone it's really a problem that many people are facing right now um i don't know if you know but wendy but you know within it organizations it <laughs> oh, i'm a people person <laughs> um, we like things to have a process and whatever that process is and right. so waterfall basically you started at the beginning a bit like building a house you right. say i'm a customer what do i want right and then you tell the architect and they have a go at designing it they pass it back to you you say are you happy or not then they sign off the designs then right. they get an engineer to see how they'll structurally build it right then they build it then you turn up six months 18 months who knows how long to then see if it's the house you wanted okay and invariably there's things that you were really happy with and things that you're not happy with but it's generally too late to do anything about it unless you have a lot of money. Okay. So you've okay. spent a lot of money and spent a lot of time and potentially not got what you wanted. But crucially, mm -hmm. at any point in that build before then, you've got, you can't move into your house. You've got nothing of value. So if you stop halfway through, you've uh, got, yes. still got nothing, yes. but you've yes. spent at least half the money. Got you. Yeah. So with, with Agile, um, it, was much, it was all about this concept of people being agile, being able to respond to business needs, mm -hmm. but also to be able to control how you spend. Every time you do something, you get something back. Right, okay. So instead, we'd bring that engineer, that architect, the builder, you as the customer, all together into one room. Yes. And we'd say to build a house, there's lots of elements of this. Yeah. What will we build today? And everybody uh, says, okay. let's build the door. Okay. okay, but that only works because all of us, the architect and the builder and everybody has decided that that's a good idea and yeah. can turn up in the same physical space, ideally, mm -hmm. um, and then do that and focus and work that way. So the customer has to be happy working yeah. in that way. Yeah. You know, even down to the basics of the project planner needs to be willing to work that way. So can I just efforts. stop you there? So why does uh, the change from waterfall to agile create such chaos? What, what's the main reason behind that? Sadly, and probably this is what David's company is experiencing, is they've said the IT department is to work agile. Yes. But the rest of the organization is still working in its own way. Ah, so the rest of the organization so is used to writing a requirements document. Yes. They're used to getting the requirements exactly the way they wanted, and they tend to have workshops. Right. They sit, write down their requirements, and then they send it off to IT to build. Yeah. And then they come back in and test at the end. So that during that period of build, the business can usually get on and do their day to day job. OK, so ten million dollar question. Uh, uh, how can you help them out? What would you recommend or what processes could be put in place to get rid of the chaos in relation to putting the agile? What's it called? The agile working agile process instead of waterfall in place. What would you recommend? There's a lot of there's agile coaches out there. Which okay, is really, okay. But the first thing an agile coach is going to say is that we need to implement agile from the top down. So okay. what might have okay. previously been an official steering committee that check tracks against three milestones a year and releases funds in a particular way. You literally need the people at the top to say we're going to operate. Buy into it. And then you have to look at your organizational structure and work and implement it all the ways. No through. easy fix, David, by the sound of it. <laughs> I think possibly this might be something even to, to consider in greater depth and maybe do a, an insight podcast I or a so. spotlight, so. a deep dive, as mm. we would call it into that particular area, especially if you're saying there's lots of 
different organizations you think might be going through the same problem. So David, look out for our, our deep dive into this specific topic of changing from waterfall into agile or any other type of interface that might be going through that same sort of change or to a different uh, IT system. Uh, I hope Nicholas um, helped you out or pointed you in a bit of a direction, but definitely sounds like buy in from the top and change the system company-wide rather than specifically within one department because there's a mismatch exactly. if I've got that right. You're absolutely right. Great. Right, I look forward to that next time. Yes, yes. Well, thanks, David. Thanks for calling Corporate Conundrums and we hope we've been of assistance and look out for the deep dive. Bye for now. So, Wendy, oh my goodness. We didn't know what was going to come in. <laughs> and my goodness, we've been right across the whole spectrum of running a business and all these people issues. Yeah. There was... Um, Salesforce dynamics and the cross fertilization of ideas. Indeed, yes. There that was, was Frank, I think. Fundraising. Yep. yep and getting yep. engagement from a, a government customer. Indeed, indeed. That's um, quite a biggie. Yes. Yes. There was about motivating people to join a business. Team building, looking in the sort of multi level network marketing. Mm -hmm. She was talking about mm -hmm. building her team. Yep. Project management was that huge question, which I will have to revisit. <laughs> yes, that definitely leads a uh, uh, sort of spotlight into that particular area. I uh, definitely think that's something to be considered because it just seems to be such a wide, mm. uh, significant issue for a lot of different organisations. So and then, of course, management. there was that unique training. Um, yes, yeah, the art, the artist. Uh -huh. um, yeah, uh, mental, mental health. Uh, yeah, mental health, I think, is, you know, we've talked about deep diving. Mental health is a, is a definite for looking at one of our, our future issues. We're, we're sort of structuring it in, in, our podcast will be in three main areas. So we'll have an open forum, we'll have a, a spotlight, and the spotlight will be a specific client or a specific question, if you like, somebody that's called in with a specific area that we feel we haven't been able to give it the time that it, that it really requires to, to, to uh, give the, the, the complete answer. So that'll be our, our, our spotlight and a, and a deep dive. And the deep dive will be choosing a particular business topic that is uh, relevant to the now and such as uh, resilience or stress management, project management. So it'll be a, a particular area that we feel is um, relevant and in the now in business speak. Um, that will be the three areas uh, that we will welcome you to listen into. So the way to engage with us, of course, is to join our Facebook page, um, which is Corporate Conundrums, to any questions or queries, or of course, if you want to actually dial into our next podcast or submit a question, then our Facebook page, Corporate Conundrums, is the place to do that. Um, but also, we'll be doing these future podcasts yes. on a regular basis. Yep. So don't forget to subscribe to our page and also tick that bell so that you'll be notified when our next podcast is up. Uh, so that'll be on YouTube. We've got a YouTube channel. Um, so Corporate Conundrums on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to that and tick the bell. Um, and the bell, I believe, is a, a, a trigger for our next future shows that uh, will be will be highlighted to you. Is that correct, Nicole? That's right. If yeah. you're a subscriber, they'll let you know. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And we very much look forward to you coming onto our next show for Corporate Conundrums. In the meantime, bye from Nicola. Bye from me. And from myself, Wendy. All bye the best. Bye. Bye. More commemorise. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.